Hello there, market researchers. So we're going to take a look at step five, the analyzing the results. So you've conducted your survey, you've distributed them, you've received all of them back, you've tabulated them, and now you have a spreadsheet of all of these results. So what are they telling you? What do they mean? Why should we care? This is all about the analysis of these results, and that's what we're going to take a look at today. All right, so when I'm talking about step five, what am I talking about? Well, you've worked through your report to a certain degree, right? You've created your tele page, table of contents, you've done your introduction as far as the, what was your research purpose, you, what were your objectives, um, how you address randomness, bias, sample um, description of your target respondents, and your sample size, and now you're into the body of your report. You have previously detailed exactly how you gathered your research. You've conducted that research. You've gathered the results. And so now you need to draw some conclusions. What are the results telling you? So this is where you're going to include some graphs, some charts, some visual aids to represent this as well. So conclusions. This section, each group member must provide a conclusion for each of their survey questions. Each of you contributed five survey questions to the survey. You now need to conclude the results of your survey questions. So it won't necessarily be concluding 1 through 5 for group member A and then 6 through 10 for group member B and then 11 through 15 for group member C. It's your survey questions, the five that you contributed to. For one of your survey questions, you will have to provide a graph to illustrate this. I, again, I don't necessarily think that a graph illustrating the gender composition of your survey response is really that beneficial. Um, I think maybe a rating scale kind of question would be have a better graph, would, would provide a better visual representation of the results. Again, you will eventually work towards providing a correlation between the two questions of your choice from the survey, and, and we'll look at that in the next video. So what should your conclusions uh, look like? Well, you should draw conclusions from your question results. This should be a summary of the results. You should use data terminology. We, we've talked about mean, median, mode, and dis various distributions. So that should be included in your analysis of the survey results. And then you need to make sense of the data. You need to s tell the, the reader what is this data suggesting. So this is where you need to state the significance. This is the so what part, right? Make sense of the data. To have a better idea of what I'm talking about, let's look at an example and really see what we mean by making sense of the data. All right, so pretend for a second that this is one of your survey questions. Which type of lesson do you prefer? A lesson with technology or a lesson without? And then you'd ask them to specify. And you have two options, lessons using technology, lessons not using technology. If we were to write this down in a paragraph, um, it would look like a summary of 25 said yes and 2 said no. Sometimes a visual representation like this graph might be a great way to illustrate this. It doesn't have to be every question, just one of the questions. So this is one of your results. What this looks like in your actual report would be a summary such as according to question number five, the majority, 90%, prefer their classes to incorporate technology. Now you want to get into the so what. What does this mean? What is this telling us? So you start off with the idea of this is by far the most common answer to this question. So I've highlighted there that this is what you mean by mode. By saying most common, you're saying mode, and that's acceptable. You're not going to say necessarily mode right in your description. You're going to refer to mode by saying most common. And now the significance. Now this is the so what. Therefore, in order to connect with students best and engage them mo more so that effective learning can take place, educators need to look to incorporate technology more in their classrooms. So you're really driving home this idea that 92% said that th they prefer classes to incorporate technology. So you really need to drive this fact home. You're not necessarily making that recommendation, that's another section, but you are saying the so what. All right, so let's make the connection now to your assessment, your rubric, right? If you look at your rubric, you have your knowledge, your thinking, your application, your communication. Thinking. This is exactly what you're doing when you are drawing conclusions from your survey results. And so your thinking is all about the conclusions. So your five questions and how you conclude them will compose your thinking assessment, your thinking mark, right? So you want to make sure that you are thorough that you're insightful in your analysis, that you provide mean, median, mode, 
and in, again in your subset analysis, which we'll get to, is included and is really effective. So this is where you're going to really critically think about the numbers and present it to the reader um, in a way that they understand. And the majority of this is not just summarizing the results, it's that so what? Why should we care? Why do we need to really know these results? Alright, so that's step five and we'll continue with step six in the next video.